This is a mullet and it just made a thousand mile journey from the Carolinas down to the Florida coast. Swimming tirelessly from beach to beach, these mullet are telling a story of one of nature's greatest migrations. Fishermen flock the beaches to partake in the action. Even the unsuspecting beachgoer gets front row seats to one of the greatest shows on earth. These mullet have one goal and that is to migrate to the southern end of Florida and head offshore to spawn. Some become residents of the coast and inland waters, while others have a less desirable fate. Join me as I get to share my favorite time of the year, known as the Florida Mullet Run. The first Mullet Pod of 2023. You guys know this is my favorite time of year. It's a super special event that happens every year in Florida where the mullet pour down by the millions, if not trillions. And I see a pod down there. I know Ryan worked it this morning, my buddy Alec and Adam for moving weight. So uh, we're gonna put some big snook on the beach. Fingers crossed, we get some. So when we're doing this, we're looking for the mullet on the beach. And when it's really milky like this, you're looking for just kind of dark spots in the water, unless they're up top. You can just really tell where they are based on the color. You don't always see them. And then we use a snag rod to get our baits. All right, the first mullet of the season. Basically just cast a snag rig out with a bunch of treble hooks in line and reel it through the pod because trying to ca carry a cast net down the beach when all these fish are moving is just not ideal. You want to be mobile with the mullet run. Perfect little seven inch mullet. We got a Mustad 7-0 Demon Circle. And I like to hook them in the uh, butt right here, right by the anal fin. That way it swims away from the lead and offshore away from the mullet pond. So the whole thing with this is we're fishing a beach that's really known for a lot of snook. And normally when we fish for uh, fish during the mullet run, I like to flatline them so that way they're not restricted, but the snook will be underneath the mullet pod and you want to get your bait right down there. You want to make your mullet noticeable, right? There's thousands of mullet out there, so my, with mine being pinned down by weight, a snook's really going to be able to notice it, see that mullet in distress swimming against that weight, and that's usually what gets you the bite. Finally! Swimming in. Finally got stuck. Adam, this is how you use a circle hook right here. Adam said he doesn't know how to surf, use a circle hook, so I gotta show him. Good size. Thank you. Slot 36. That'll be the world record slot. Got a nice little loader slot. All right, finally we got one. Look, Adam, look at that circle hook man, in the corner. Look at that thing. I've never seen that before. Must that circle right in the corner? There it is. Beautiful snook. My first one of the mullet run. Maybe even my first snook of the year. Definitely over slot. Nothing like them. I mean, there really is like no comparison in terms of morphology of fish and the way snook look and hunt, uh, super aggressive, huge appetite. I mean, look at the size of their mouth. They could fit some huge mullet in there. All right, 
Time to release Mr. Snooky. So one of the reasons I like this so much is every single year, it's basically like a reunion with your buddies. Adam's out here, James is out here. I mean, we see each other throughout the year, but it's like when the mullet comes around, well, the mullet run comes along, everyone pretty much drops what they're doing because it's such a unique event. And it's like, I don't know, it's candy for a fisherman. Everyone's calling each other on the phone. I was like, Adam, what beach access are you at? Calling James, we're all trying to discuss our game plan. Sometimes we'll have guys start way down you know 10 miles south of us and other guys come 10 miles to the north and then we kind of convene in the middle and find the best pods of fish and kind of work as a team so damien you're out here fishing the mullet run yep if you were to describe the mullet run in one word what would it be uh probably the best fishing of the year that's what i would describe it awesome all right okay so you know how they say work harder not smarter well, we're going to work smarter today, so Dennis is getting the drone ready right here. And we're going to throw it up in the air. And instead of checking every single beach axis, that thing can do like a four mile range. So we're going to fly it up and down the beach and look for the mullet instead of having to get out of the truck and checking every single beach axis. Don't get me wrong, I love to exercise, but sometimes you got to, when you're on a time crunch and we've only got four hours to fish, we got to get that thing in the air. It's the best eyes in the sky. Learning how to fly the drone is super easy. I mean, they make them so easy to fly nowadays. Even if you're not a filmmaker, a videographer, or whatever, if you get a small, cheap drone and learn how to fly it just to like find fish, it is a really good tool to use for this type of uh, application. Yeah, that water is milky. That is a big swell from uh, Hurricane Lee offshore. Yeah, it's got the beach really churned up, which would make for great fishing, but also tough to find me. And so depending on what drone you're using, it, it takes away from quality, but if you're just scouting an area, you can actually zoom in. You could be high up above and be clear of any obstacles and just slowly just scan the beach just like this. You have no worries about crashing. And if you see some movement, if you see some fish or whatever, this is like way faster than walking the beach. Flew the drone for give or take, let's say 10 miles total of beach. Saw a few pods with not much going on. The first pod we stopped at was going off, but it was kind of out far and there was a boat on it. And anytime there's a boat on it, not good for the land-based fishermen. And it was way south, it was quite the walk. Went further towards the inlet, saw a few pods, not much on them. But then we went north of the inlet and Dennis found something really, really unique. There's like this little tide pool area and it looks like the mullet got trapped there and there's a bunch of snook which is kind of patrolling through them so it could make for a really uh, neat video experience as well as a fishing experience. You know, kind of sight fishing giant snook in what would you say Dennis, two feet of water, three feet of water at the most. So we're going to do a little exploring, you never know. But that's why I love this time of year and that's why I love the mullet run so much is because even though it's all the same, it's the same fish over and over feeding on mullet, it's like every single pod and every single school has got its own little bit of character and flair. We're making our way out on the beach and see what we see. Found it. See, there's this little tide pool. As the tide goes out, the mullet just seek refuge in here. But they don't know that a snook can also get in really skinny water. So you guys see the beach is right there. There's the sandbar and there's a little tide pool right here. And as we were walking up, we even saw the snook busting them. So this could be a really pretty special experience. That's wild. So I see a few snook right there. I don't want to spook them. I think Dennis is going to get the drone up. You snag a mullet and just kind of work. I'm gonna try to sight fish one. There's a bunch of rocks right here, so I gotta be careful not to get the snag rig caught. Normally, I always hook them in the uh, tail, but I kind of wanna be able to sight fish them, so I'm gonna hook them right here in the nose, kind of in the head, so I can really control where he goes. Oh, there a shark's got me, Dennis. Oh! 
Never have I been oh, more excited to hook a nurse shark in my life. Just the area we're in is just so unique. I feel like I'm in a, you know, like a tropical country in the Pacific right now, fishing a tide pool. It's just bizarre. I think this is the coolest thing ever. This is really, this is really sick. This is one of those times where I don't have to catch every fish in the ocean that swims. I get just as much satisfaction visually from the experience, just seeing fish in their natural habitat and capitalizing on an opportunity like this. This probably happens a few times a year where bait gets stuck in here and you have nurse sharks and snook together in the same tide pool working together to corral mullet. How insane is that? Oh yeah, you got one looking at it. Really? Oh, that might have been a nurse shark. There's a snook before it. Ooh, he just jolted, huh? He must be looking at it. He's nervous. Try doing the sand trick, but really, really like free line it. Like don't, don't pull on him at all. Like leave him on the beach? He's not on the beach, isn't he? Pull him. Good, let it sit. He's really singled out now. Oh yeah. Nurse shark might be looking for him. Pull. I think that nurse shark's hounding him. Oh, I see him, I see him, okay. Oh, I just got thumped by a snook. Yeah, <laughs> that was so cool. Oh, I just got thumped by a snook. I got it. Yeah. <laughs> I got it. Oh my gosh. I don't think this has ever been recorded in the history ever. You got it? <laughs> that was so cool. Best part is you could just play them nice and easy right here. Without a doubt, the coolest snook catch of my entire life. And the best part is Dennis got it all on video and on the drone. Snook, nurse sharks, mullet, tide pool. Come over here, Mr. Snooky. Wow. <laughs> nice job, dude. Holy moly. Let me put this over here. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, I can't believe we got that. I, I, it's like, it's moments like this. I've always wanted to capture these moments for you guys. To show you what we get to do you know on a weekly basis and having someone like Dennis I would have never been able to do this without him you know finding the, the mullet pot on the beach with the drone and then capitalizing on that bite he's like Vic don't move your mullet leave it right there must add circle hook in the corner tough line floral you already know and look at that they rinse them off real quick gorgeous little overslot snook probably 34 inches in two feet of water, popped the mullet, casted him on the outside edge of the sand, and just kind of let him chill there. Stunning fish, guys. And the way it was caught is what really makes this catch unique and special. And to share it with my good bud Dennis, priceless. Oh, mullet are swimming across. There's something coming right towards him. Oh, oh snook right? just snook just turned on him. Right, went right under him, didn't it? Yep. Checked it out. There's another one. Let him swim. He's swimming. He's in complete free school. Complete. Nurse sharks after him. Yeah, I see that. Oh no! Pull, pull, pull. Oh. No, he didn't get it. Yeah, he did. Oh yeah, he did. 
Uh-oh, we got a nurse curse. It was bound to happen. conditions that we're given, you know? One snook, one nurse. Not only do I have eyes in the sky, but what better time to tell you guys about the sunglass sponsor on the channel, Waterlinko. So for the past nine months, I've been rocking the Waterlinko sunglasses and I can tell you guys without a doubt, best sunglasses I've ever worn. And I've been waiting to say that because, you know, you got to really, you got to really wear something and use it for a long time to really put your endorsement behind it. I've worn Costas, I've worn Maui Gyms, I've worn Smiths. The lamination on these things doesn't come off. I can see perfectly the snook on the other side of the water. I mean, I know sunglasses are sunglasses at the end of the day, but for a fisherman, investing in a good pair of sunglasses is so important, especially when you're sight fishing protect your eyes and just your your time on the water is going to be so much more enjoyable so if you guys want to save 15 percent off you can actually use my code landshark they got a bunch of different models to choose from i'll have them linked below as well as the website on the screen here for the mullet run and everything we've been doing sight fishing rooster fish in panama i'm super impressed with this brand i just really really like it So every single day Dennis asked me, so when's the next time we're fishing the beach? And I said, every single day that ends in Y in September. And he's like, you're kidding, right? And I'm like, no, we, you, you never know. Every single day presents a different opportunity. And like I was saying, it's, it might be monotonous, but it's not. Something like this might happen one time during the entire mullet run, where the mullet get comfortable enough to get here at low tide. It might not happen tomorrow. It might not happen until next year. You gotta go every single opportunity you get that you're able to go. A good friend of mine once told me the best time to fish is when you can and it's never been truer. If you're a weekend warrior or you're a Monday Tuesday guy you gotta go when you can go. All right, guys, we just found an absolute stunner of a pod. There's tarpon all over this thing, and they're out far. So I take the shirt off, take the hat off, because I'm going to wade out there. I don't think you're going to be able to reach them unless you're out there. So you got to do what you got to do. Let's get it. That's what happens, you go out there and wait for them. It happens, as they say, if it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen out here, right? So well, you guys saw, I had to wait out there because the mullet are not in close. So to get to where the mullet pond was, you really gotta go past that swell. And it paid off, baby. My bail open. Close it, lean into him. You guys saw, I just point that rod to the side. And that circle hook just buries in. 
And I can tell you right now, trying to land this thing with the swell is not going to be easy. I knew there was no way that that tarpon was coming in that easy. That was like a five minute fight. He got in this swell wash right here within 10 feet from shore and he's like, uh-uh man. I'm not called the Silver King for nothing. I'm going back out. We got a lot of elements to battle today. Seaweed all over the line, monster swell, but it makes the challenge for these fish that much better. He's gonna just have to get stupid and let that swell carry him to the beach. What are you gonna do when he gets here? I don't know. I don't know. Brooke said, what are you gonna do when he gets here? I really don't know with this swell. Alex's gonna go in and try to grab him. Let's see if this one swell brings him in. Ah, uh, no. Oh, that was sick. Watch the line. You're in the line, Alec. Come on, baby. Come on. This swell. This swell. Oh, he just pulled. He just pulled. Either pulled or frayed, we'll see. Nope. I mean, it's just a caught fish. Alec had his hand on the leader. You could hope that you get uh, get him out of the water for a little bit, get a little pick, releasing him, but so much respect for those fish, man. They give you every single ounce of strength, fooling them is hard enough, getting a bite, keeping them glued. But that was the second bait I fished all day and uh, it is going off, so I'm stoked to get back out there. For me, the mullet run just brings me to simpler times. Yeah, I'm running out there with a cameraman, drone, and all these fancy cameras, but I forget about all that. I just feel like a kid at heart, running up and down the beach, just chasing a fish. And I'm sure many of you get that very same feeling. And speaking of younger times, you're about to see my little brother Sam, who just so happened to move to Florida, and this was the biggest fish of his life. My little brother on his first tarpon from the beach. Yo. See when he's running like that, let him run. That's Only it. reel when you can reel. Okay. Like now. Oh no, keep going. Let him go. Sam, that's a big tarpon. Yeah, I saw him go, man. He's huge. Alright guys. Little brother just moved to Florida from California. Gonna be his first fish since the move. Mullet. Oh, just jump. Keep real, keep real, 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 real. You're doing great, brother. So, first fish in the 2023 mullet run for him i wanted to bring him out here get him a little taste of florida and what what this is all about yes sir well, there's probably no better first fish how's that feel were you ready for it were you sleeping no real 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 good stop what's your biggest fish besides this the kingfish yeah def <laughs> definitely so see he's taken line but 
if you try to reel against the drag, it's not good. Yeah, just like that. So you can pump up, like lift the rod up. Yep, and then down. He's big, he's probably close to 100 pounds. Oh, he's gonna wanna jump. He's getting ready. Yep, he jumped. Sam kept reeling his bait and thinking that it was dead. You still think it was dead now? Yeah. <laughs> nah. It's gonna hurt. I mean, it's a big fish. You're in for a 30 minute fight here. Sam, showing us up today, Brooke, huh? Yep. He reeled his bait in. He said, I think it's dead. I said, no, it's not. Cast it back out there. And all of a sudden, bam, that thing just took off. And then, there you go. Oh, keep reeling, keep reeling. Don't let it get slack. It won't budge, man. It's a big fish. And then if you put it a little bit lower on your leg, you might be more comfortable. He's gonna jump. I think he's gonna jump. He's going out far, man. Yeah. Just like that. Just like that. Might have been to go. I want to roast this up here. You're getting roasted right now. Hey, whatever. It's okay. I like to get roasted too. This is probably the toughest fish you could possibly ever fight as your first fish from the beach. Hey. One of the toughest fish to ever land, so he's doing a great job. You know, he doesn't get to do this often. Besides this, like we... Year, I know, besides this, we took him and he caught a kingfish on the boat. And then uh, he's caught a few bass in California, but that's about it. I'm doing good. I'm Into what, how, what do you think about that? His first fish in Florida, Walking huh? out here, he was like, I'm gonna catch the biggest fish. And I'm like, you know what? We need to bring him more often because he's super positive. Uh-huh. See a tarpon it's... jump out of the water. I thought it was Brooke. Chill, buddy, chill. He did break. What do you have to say to your friends at home who are watching right now? Uh, Bram, I'm here, man. I made it. <laughs> Come on, Bram. Bram, Lima, Jason, Marco, child. Uh, yeah, guys, I'm... I'm doing this. This is real. I didn't. Friend, I didn't know. Yeah, my friend Bram. He's always asking, "When are you gonna take me fishing?" You know. I'm here, Bram. I'm here. You're doing, I'm doing it. it. I'm doing it. You're doing the thing. Oh, it's nice and easy, Sam. He's gonna want to jump again. Yep. He went up. You see one? He's gulping air like that. You saw that? Yeah. He's really tired now. Should I get him now? Man. You come here from California, there's 15 people fishing the beach, and you're the only one with the tarpon, huh? Hey man, good luck in California. All I gotta say is do 100 pull-ups per day. Makes it much more easy. Yeah, is that the secret? That's the secret. <laughs> Looking forward to doing this a lot more often, man. We are gonna do this all the time. This fish is gonna hook you for life, I promise you that. Time to pop up. Watch, 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 watch. There you go, perfect. Go down there with him. Thank you. All right. Hey, 
it is. There's Sam's tarpon. Beautiful fish, Sam. Yeah, dang. What do you got to say? It was a really nice fight. I wish we could eat this guy, but he's he did a good job. I am happy that I did not give up. I really am happy. It's just a very beautiful fish. You know? yeah. And I'm happy like gold and silver. It looks like like rusted metal or something. Yeah. But you know, it's very pretty. All right, gonna release the tarpon now. The mullet run usually starts around the end of August and goes through about the middle of November, peaking sometime in October. Mullet are triggered to migrate by a few things, one of them being cooling water temperatures, and the second is some type of pressure system, whether it be a tropical storm, hurricane, or a northeast wind. All three of these will usually create a really big swell, which the mullet will use as a guide to migrate down. Well, we met up with the famous, no longer Juno Ryan. Infamous Juno Ryan that doesn't post on YouTube anymore, but we'll be posting again soon. We'll see you guys in that next video. <laughs> this man hasn't posted in two months. We got to change that. Dennis is on vacation. He is on a cruise. So you guys got the Vic cam. No fancy stuff, just the GoPro like it was back in the day on the chesty and got the rods. Saw some sharks on the drone. Let's go catch one. So I saw this pod earlier on the drone, but they got real close to the beach. So holy moly, that was a shark right there in the surf, dude. Do you see how close he got? I don't even think, I think you could just flatline for him, Ryan. Really? My mullet is like a quarter alive. Oh, I just got eight. Yeah, oh, that looks like a shark. Jump, jump. jump. I think it's going to be a shark. Big shark head shakes. Hey, we'll take it. Yeah, I think so. I would take a shark at this point in the day. After filming all day and not getting to fish, it feels good to get tight and pull on something. You fish in a lure, right, Ryan? No. Well, I got 80 pound on. It's not a very big black tip. It's right here, Ryan. He's a wee guy, you can take the GoPro now. All right, we got ourselves a black tip. You're a bound to hook one. There's gotta be hundreds of sharks in this school. Probably more sharks than there are tarpon. <laughs> oh boy. Still remember how to do it, huh? Wee. There it goes. Bro. Catch and release on a shark. That's perfect. That's all we were gonna do anyway. But uh the minute that he got out of my hands, I was like, nah, that's over. Like, because they turn their heads and shake. He just chewed through that uh, fluorocarbon leader, but that's what we were gonna do anyway. Still fun to pull on. Um, gonna get back out there, but this is the most epic, epic. Like, I know fishermen tend to overuse that word a lot, especially YouTubers like me. But when you talk about a pod and what you wanna see, you know how much patience you have to have as a fisherman to fly a drone instead of seeing all those juicy tarpon and sharks to cast into it? it takes a lot of patience. So I really applaud all the camera guys. I haven't been behind the camera in a long time now that I got Dennis. But man, oh man. 
This pod is everything you could imagine. Snook, tarpon, black tips. As much as I wanted to keep fishing, big pods like this are usually just eye candy and not that productive in terms of hooking up. There's just so much bait and even though there's a lot of predators, for your bait to get noticed, it's almost impossible. So I decided to put the rod down and put the drone in the air. You guys, this is the point in the video. You see all these tarpon and snook and sharks eating the mullet. Well, it's the point in the video where we join in on the fun and see what all the hype is about. So, got the cast net, just rolled up to the beach. We're gonna net some, take them back to the house, and eat them. Because what better way to end this video than to do a catch clean cook with the mullet. back to the house, clean them up, and cook them up. I promise this is the last B-roll segment you're gonna see, but we got this footage on the last day and I absolutely love seeing fish swimming underwater. So it's too juicy not to show you guys. What a cool little bait fish. So if you guys look, Moloch got these little red lips, almost if, as if they're like wearing lipstick. And these guys are actually vegetarian. So a lot of times you'll see them down like in the bottom of canals, they'll go and scoop up algae or whatever growth is on the bottom and they kind of filter feed it. Um, can't catch these with a the sabiki because they don't eat meat. 
interesting little fish. I know a lot of people, they try to get huge ones on the fly. So we're gonna fly this little guy up. This is like the perfect eating size, I'd say. They do get a lot bigger. These guys will get, shoot. I've seen them in, in freshwater all the way up to like, I wanna say nine pounds. They get huge when they get landlocked, like in our lakes and stuff. Um, you know, right now they're coming down the beach and you might be wondering, where do they end up? Well, a lot of them go offshore to spawn and then they go back up to the Carolinas. But a lot of them will get stuck in our rivers. They'll get stuck in a canal just like this one and they'll just become resident fish, you know? Um, all up and down the east coast of Florida, Fort Pierce, St. Augustine, Broward County. Broward County, they'll just become the resident like inshore mullet. And then there's another mullet run in the springtime called the spring mullet run. But I think that's all silver mullet, whereas this right here, I'm pretty sure is a black mullet. So this one, I'm just gonna run down the length of the spine. You could fly in both ways. The first side I did like a traditional fillet, the second side I did just running down. So if you ever wondered what a mullet looked like or what all the hype is about, it's got a kind of a little pinkish texture. It's very firm. It's not mushy whatsoever. And I remember eating them last year and they were delicious. So last year I ate them with the skin on. I scaled them, but this time we're just going to lightly either grill them or fry them and I'm going to take the skin off. Pretty decent bloodline. Definitely something you'd want to eat fresh. Um, really popular to smoke them, I think because they have such a good oil content. Let's, see, let's get rid of that. That ain't bad, man. You go out there and you get skunked one day and you want to find out what a mullet tastes like. Look at that. That's a decent amount of meat off of a little bait fish. And you saw how many we cast netted. You could easily make a meal for your friends and family. You guys don't understand how bittersweet this moment is. I tend to get a little obsessed when it comes to the mullet run. Um, Dennis and I probably spent, I wanna say, at least 10 solid days on the beach chasing these fish, chasing the predators that are behind them, but most importantly, just immersing ourselves in the experience, right? I think it's easy as a fisherman to get caught up in always the catch, the catch, the catch, what you're gonna bring home, what's in the cooler. But growing up, I'm sure a lot of you can relate. I loved watching Steve Irwin. I loved watching BBC. I loved watching Animal Planet and all these nature shows and anything that had to do with the ocean, I was glued to, right? This is like you're watching that nature show in real time. I mean, I've had some incredible days on the water and I'm sure you have too, but what you see during the mullet run, the white water, the explosion, the fish jumping, that is what the days that people say you should have been there or you, you should have, you know, it, it happened yesterday. That was basically what we got to live through for the past month. And, um, you know, it is bittersweet that it's coming to an end, but also a nice way to end the chapter. And we are gonna eat some mullet to kind of honor them and also to kind of see what they're all about. I've eaten them in the past, but I kind of forgot what they taste like. They remind me a lot of Blue Runner in terms of what they look like and the texture. A Blue Runner is a great lesser known fish. A lot of people think it's just bait, but they're great. So all we did with these fish was salt and pepper. It's just me and Dennis. Um, Ricky is getting a haircut, everyone's busy. So we're just gonna eat up some mullet for lunch real quick. So let's head on outside. Just out here on the sidekick, got a little nonstick pan medium heat, and we're just gonna pan fry these. No fancy sauces, no fancy side dishes, just taste the mullet. See what these tarpon are thinking and see what these snook are thinking when they're gorging themselves on this fatty fish. Oil's decently hot. Now let's go down into the pan. You got something to say, Dennis. What do you got to say? If you guys are still watching after 
An hour. <laughs> An hour's worth of footage almost. Uh, shout out to you guys for supporting the channel and uh, yeah. <laughs> I have nothing to say. I mean, all right, well, fil filming my first mullet run, legit mullet run, uh, pretty brutal as far as like how many days you're out there. But the coolest part was definitely today. I mean, the last day we, we found uh, uh, a school with some clear water. Yeah, it was just cool being in the water with them and seeing what it's all about and finally getting that off of my bucket list. So, so yeah. Well said. So I would say the most popular thing to do with a mullet, if you typed in mullet recipe or mullet catch and cook online, is to smoke it on something like this, on this Camp Chef right here. Seeing as we are going to Mexico in a few days, we don't have a lot of time and smoking is kind of a long process of brining, throwing it on the smoker. Dennis has to get home and edit this video and go through hours and hours of footage. So we're just doing a simple salt and pepper. I didn't even put garlic powder on and you guys know how much I love garlic powder. I just want to taste this mullet for what it is. Oh yeah, they're done. So like I was telling you about the bloodline, the reason people smoke them, the best fish to, to smoke are oily fish because they don't dry out. And mullet are very oily. If I could compare the mullet run to anything in terms of a, nature, a nature's event, when you think about a bear that's ready to hibernate, he's gorging himself on salmon, which is one of the fattiest fish in the ocean. This is kind of the equivalent to our salmon for our inshore species, like our snook and tarpon. They're gorging themselves for the winter because they're warm water fish and they do get a little bit lethargic. They don't feed as much in the winter time. So this is kind of like they're, you know, getting fat, building up that winter coat for uh, that colder water to come through. It's time to dig in, Dennis. I'm going for a nice shoulder piece right here. It's kind of hard. It's very tender. I'm definitely an oilier fish. All right, here we go, boys. A little hot. <clears throat> it's, um, if you don't like oily fish, this is not the fish for you. But if you're Eastern European and you grew up eating canned sardines and canned tuna, this might be the fish for you. I like it. I personally like fish with a lot of flavor. That bloodline right there, that doesn't bother me, that is flavor. It's not bland. If you're someone who likes hogfish, you're probably not gonna like a mullet. This is a true fisherman's fish right here. I was telling Vic earlier that, um, let me see this camera. Oh, okay. <clears throat> I'm gonna have pepper in my throat. I was telling Vic earlier that, so when I first started working for Vic, uh, we were like just a few videos in on the bull shark catch, can, catch and cook. cook. And uh, honestly, I mean, I, I was looking forward to that. Like a shark eating one, I'm not gonna do that too many times in my life. So I, I was actually looking forward to that. I've caught my share of mullet, uh, and I never thought I was ever, ever gonna eat one, but this is actually a lot better than I expected. I was kind of dreading this, but <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I was kind of <laughs> dreading this. I'm like, oh boy, a mullet, great. But it's actually good. I am salt pepper. Didn't, need, need. A, didn't need anything else, really. No. It was good. Savory. Savory is a good word. I like it. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching. We're going to continue to enjoy this delicious mullet. And seriously, I want to thank you guys if you made it this far. I know it's a long video, but it's something I'm very passionate about. And I love telling this story every single year. This is. This is my National Geographic story to tell, right? It's, it's local to us, it's our home waters, it's something I grew up doing as a kid, and I love it, and I love sharing it with you guys. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.